All right, worst part. Here we go. Let's do this. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to make a voice guide for the Citadel of Peril. Believe it or not, this is the tower with the least wins in it. In total, only around 500 people as of this video have beaten Citadel of Peril, with TOZ not even being close to second place. This Citadel is extremely different where you need to go very fast and be as quick as you can. If you're too slow or fall down too far, you will hit an insta-kill lava pool which instantly rises as soon as you start, and the further up you go, the quicker the lava rises on top of it. This is a high remorseless citadel and is way harder than Zezpla's, making it, in my opinion, the second hardest tower in the zone. With this being the second hardest tower in the game, second to only quadrilaterals. This citadel is a completely different experience and ride compared to any other tower in the game. It requires a different type of motivation and persistence to get down. So whether you're thinking about giving this heart-rushing citadel a go for yourself, or just want to see the citadel for yourself, let's go ahead and head inside the citadel. Welcome to floor 1. This is really the most painful floor as you have to do this all the time. And even though it has pretty simple structures, it gets really frustrating and really annoying. This floor was definitely one of my least favorites in the entire citadel. I highly recommend you do this skip, it'll save you some time, but make sure you're careful of moving parts that can hurt your run here. You want to be here before 46 seconds, that's when this cycle will go through. If you're there in time, you'll be able to go through the first floor at a very good pace. Drop down on this wraparound and be careful of the wraparound right after. For some reason, I like to fall there a lot. When you head up to this section, you want to rotate this 90 degrees so you're able to head right back on top. These morphers are really hard to see because of the lava matching the same color. So make sure you have your eyes wide open and make sure you know what you're doing. I recommend you only play this citadel on a laggy server. If you're in a laggy server, you can just stand on this part and progress right to floor 3. This first wraparound is a tilting platform, so keep your eye out for that. When you make it to here, press the button to spawn a ball and use the pushing platform to push it into a button. I recommend you do this the way I do to save some time. When you get to these trusses, I recommend you simply just take your time. You don't want to rush these trusses. This cylinder wrap got me a few times, so make sure you keep your eye out here. 
These elevator wraps are pretty simple, but just be careful because sometimes elevators don't like to work correctly. Spin 180 degrees and then transfer to the second set of spinners. That kill brick wall is not can collide true, so don't worry about it. Here, you want to try and climb up as fast as possible so you don't get smushed in. As soon as this spinner gets you, you want to move out the way. And then hit this button and get back on the spinner. Go towards the left so that you don't hit your head, and then you'll be able to progress onto floor 5. Floor 5 has these visibility buttons scattered throughout the tower. I'm only going to use the two that are needed, the first one and the last one. Here, don't do it the right way, just skip on top. It's much easier to do that. Press this button that is required to open up a ladder to be able to progress. And then head down this path and head your way onto another button. Once the timer goes out, the smog will come in. However, don't worry about it. As you can see, it is not that hard to see. Once you hit this button, this wedge ahead of you will appear. I recommend you hold W on this push platform and then just tilt your camera and jump. It makes this jump way easier to pull off. If you touch any of the walls in this part, you'll be teleported to the beginning of the floor. So simply maneuver around and use the lower parts to your advantage. If you fall on the orange, it simply will just take you to the very beginning of this short little section. So don't worry about failing this part. Once you press the green button, your visibility will be back and you'll be able to progress onto the sixth floor. If you fall back down here, you only have to do the beginning and then just climb right up. These two platforms are seesaws, so keep that in mind. These elevators will push you off the pushing platform and teleport you back. And be careful, these final two sections move around. Once you press this button, go ahead and continue through here, and continue through the seesaw platforms. Instead of heading left this time, you want to head to the right and climb up this ladder. This section is the exact reason why I highly recommend you do this in a laggy server. This part here is a flat side hotspot, and falling can absolutely tank all your health. Be careful because most of the kill bricks here are can collide true. This part is a little high, so it's sometimes hard to land. These elevators were my PB for a while. They are very annoying. As soon as you bob up, that's when you want to do the move. This section was really annoying and made me rage so much until I got it down. However, after you pass that section, you are already on the 7th floor. Nice job. Head to the right and you will see reason number 2 why I recommend you do this in a laggy server. This elevator section will absolutely take all your health down and will absolutely get you frustrated. Because you don't have to do it just once, you have to go back and do it again. But this time, getting onto the elevator back is a little bit glitchy, so do be aware of that. Then, you just have some fairly simple obstacles for a lot of the rest of the floor. Sometimes you're lucky and the ladder is filled in for you. Don't do it! There's a cheese barrier on floor 14, and I am not aware, though, if that's the reason why it's there, but be careful. You'll though need to grab three hammers to pass this section. Just follow me to each one of them. The first two are really easy and have little to worry about. While this third and final hammer, it's pretty easy to get to, there are quite a few times where I fell here because of the weird janky angling that this part has, so do keep that in mind.
jump up here twice and sit and wait for the lava to go ahead and finish its course to be able to head onto floor 8. Throughout this entire floor, you will be sandwiched within two kill brick walls. And because of the very slow pace that this floor has, the lava is going to get pretty close to you by the end. the most infamous floor of the Citadel, Floor 9. This floor is well known for being the hardest floor. I personally thought this floor was really easy, it was just a terrible building that made this really frustrating. You'll see what I mean. This first section is really easy, and then you head onto these conveyors. This is the part that people commonly complain about, but however I found this really simple. Just simply take your time. These platforms will move in and out. As soon as they see out, I recommend you count to three. After you count to three, simply transition quickly to the other side. You only have one shot at this outside section, because if you complete it, you'll get GBJ'd because these tilting platforms will move to the side and mess you over, or if you fall here, you'll be GBJ'd. However, I only fail this outside once. This part, I simply recommend you do four jumps to make sure you're able to make it through fine. The rest of the floor is made by Gameter and is made much better than the Orbaz part though. I never had a problem falling here. This morpher, however, I absolutely hated. 
This ladder made me fall quite a few times, and you also need to be pretty quick. Once you've done that, you've passed the hardest floor of the Citadel and made it to floor 10. As you can see, I had a quite a few issues here trying to pass this part though. This part is pretty easy, and once you get here, your nerves are going to be going really crazy, and that's what makes you fall a lot. However, if you got here at a very good pace, you can take the rest of the floors at your own pace. Just not too slow. This spinner section is pretty simple with a little bit of practice. I highly recommend you go into practice time and practice this section out, because this section is really easy to slip up. This part, you'll have four buttons to press in order to progress onto floor 11. The good news is, once you've done this section, you can climb right back up to 11, so if you mess up, you can just fly right back up. Buttons 1 and 2 are by far the hardest, 3 and 4 are a cakewalk. I have no tips really other than to say absolutely practice this section very hard, as you do not want to fall here often. I only failed floor 10 twice. I found button 2 harder than button 1, but I think that really comes down to personal preference and what you're good at. Be very careful when you jump out here that you don't hit your head though. And this isn't a wraparound, it goes right onto a ladder. That is a mistake I made in practice quite a bit until I got it down. Simply just drop back down to here and progress onto button 3. Button 3 is very easy, there's absolutely nothing to talk about here. Button 4 is also extremely easy. You won't need to practice this real long in order to get it down. Once you have pressed all four buttons, go ahead and drop down and head to floor 11. Floor 11 is luckily very short and relatively simple. The main obstacle you'll see are these hole in the wall wraparounds. Skip this pushing platform by doing a long jump like I did, it's much easier. And here's an example of why I go at such a fast pace. Normally, people have gotten here a little bit over a minute after I did, but fortunately because I was really quick, I was able to save myself. Okay, let's try that again. Much better. Quite complaints about that jump, but personally I found it really easy. Make sure you jump onto this stud here, and be careful, this part spins very quickly. After you pass that part, you have one last jump, and you make it to floor 12. For this first elevator transition, make sure you're completely to the side so you're able to go through. This wrap is also a little complicated, but be careful. These spinners are actually really easy, just a little bit daunting. Here, you want to hit the morpher and immediately get on the block. It does not move with you, so you'll need to hold space and W to move around. Go around the ball, and be careful of this spinner. You're at the very last section of the lava rising part of the citadel. Be very careful because your nerves are going to be really high here, and this section is very oddly made and can easily mess you up. You need to tilt further left on this jump than you think, but once you do that, you're pretty much all good to go and have made it past the main part of the citadel. Just be careful on this final little part and you'll be able to make it onto floor 13. Congratulations. People commonly say that floor 13 is the easiest part of the citadel, and personally, I agree. The only thing that you're going to have issues here are the nerves. You have 100 seconds to complete this floor, however, that is the least of my worries when I do this floor. I'm personally more scared of 14. Once you're calmed down, 
you can press the button to be able to do this challenge. Also, the lava can't get up to you here. As long as you don't fail this part. Complete this first obby to press the button, and then you'll be able to head into the main part of the 13th floor. You'll have an easy wraparound onto a truss and some little keyholes. Wait till you get speed and transition to the other side, but be careful, you have a lot of speed and as you can see I fell. However personally, I wasn't really worried about falling at all. I knew that I was safe as long as I didn't fall toward the end of the floor, which is really hard to do. Once you're slowed down on this part, you can go ahead and progress through the rest of the floor. The first thing you'll need to do on this part is to head to the middle spinner, and then head to the button on the other side. Once you do, you need to head back on a spinner, and proceed to the final section of the 13th floor. Go around this section, and press the button, and then head back, and don't fail this thin stud onto floor 14. When I say Floor 9 was infamous, I actually think that this floor is even more infamous around the community. This floor is really long, really annoying, and if you fall here once, your run is over. You're pretty much screwed if you fall, unless you catch yourself on something, which is extremely rare. My personal recommendation is to practice the part before the rising lava and the part after synonymously and try to get it down as best as you can. Don't get flat sight on this truss like I did, and then you'll have some fairly simple jumps onto some spinners. The kill brick parts are can collide true, so you'll need to jump over them. Be careful transitioning onto this third spinner. As you can see, it was really close. I recommend you head onto this ladder and heal your health. And if you're in a laggy server, this floor is also going to be really nice to do, as you'll be able to take your time on this very stressful tightrope. Here, you'll have some conveyors. Just like floor 9, this section is not that bad, just take it nice and slow and be careful. You do have to do some pretty long jumps, so it can be haunting. This, just wait for the spinner to be horizontal, and then I recommend you go for it. Once you get to this conveyor, just simply jump around and wait for the platform to come. You have completed the very first section of floor 14, and the one that definitely scares me a lot. But now once you press this button, the lava will slowly rise. The lava slowly rising is the thing that you need to worry about the least. The lava rises very slowly. And as long as you go at a normal pace, you'll be fine. Just don't stop and take a little bit of a nerve break here, or else it will result in the ending of your run. Walk down onto this small stud, and then be careful. You have these little weird jumps here. I simply recommend you line up, and then go through them. Once you're here, you're going to need to go to the right side and press this morpher. You'll have 20 seconds to get the button and back. You need to do this in first person, because if not, your legs can split and then your run will end, because you'll fall right in the lava. And even if you save yourself, you're not going to have enough time. I came back with around 4 seconds. Take that as you will. Then, you'll need to be careful of this pushing platform, as it's very sensitive, and be able to jump right off. This section of floor 14 isn't hard, it's just absolutely stressful, because if you fall here, you're pretty much done, as there's nothing you can do to save yourself. Once you get here, you'll have some walk around. And the worst part of floor 14 is this part. You need to do some one stud transfers, and you only have one mess up here if you're fast enough. This part I found really annoying and difficult. If you're able to pass that part, as long as you're not stupid, congratulations. YES! OH MY GOD! <sighs> However, I recommend you don't get too comfortable. 
because you can still mess up on this floor. The rising lava can't get to you. However, you can fall in that pit in one of the parts, and you can also die of kill bricks if you're in a non lucky server, because this part has a lot of them. Or you can fail the final jump, or you can do what Guest did and just held R on the zipline and completely restarted his run. Good job, buddy. Anyways, I simply recommend you sit down and take a little bit of a breather after completing your biggest challenge, Floor 14. Huge props out to you. Other than that, this floor is a little bit difficult, but it's not too bad. It just has some pretty basic jumps and some morphers and spinners. That's really all there is to offer here. None of the morphers move with you, so you'll need to move around them. This first one spins around and has a 7 second timer, so dismount as soon as you can. This jump here I had a little bit of an issue with getting in the keyhole and the wrap itself. However, you're over a safety net so you don't need to worry about it too much. If you fail the final jump on this spinner, you can fall right in the pit and get killed. So be very careful! Once you do that, you have another simple wrap round and this part. This part has killbricks barraging you, but if you're on a laggy server, you really don't need to worry about it. I recommend you press it once to see it rotate around and then press it again and go ahead and do the part. It's fairly simple though. If you're in a long laggy server, this part's gonna suck because you have a kill brick constantly going ahead and spinning around. But like I said, if you're doing this in a laggy server like I recommend you do, you're not gonna need to worry about it. This spinner is pretty quick and it is a little bit hard to land, it definitely did have some issues with it in practice. This part, once again, doesn't move with you, so just walk around it. And then, you'll have some final wraparounds to do. And almost failing this one right here. And then, congratulations, you have pretty much completed the Citadel. As long as you don't fail this one last jump after this pushing platform. Oh my god, let's go! Oh! <laughs> Freaking high rem citadel down. Let's go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <sighs> oh my god, that three stud stick out is scary. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Citadel apparel down! <sighs> Golly, is that a ride? <sighs> Bro, my roulette was. Anyway, holy crap. Whew. I don't have much to say. I'm lost for words. Wow, this is just completely different compared to any other thing I have played in the past. It's a completely different skill set, and it's completely unique to me. I really enjoyed it. I had a good amount of fun with it, but definitely towards the beginning of the grind, when I was trying to get past 6, it was very boring and I barely wanted to even beat it. So... You can see the lava there behind. That's the volcano. You can kind of see it. There it is. That's the very thing that we just defeated. Citadel Apparel. You can even see 14 filled up with lava. That's a rare sight to see. But golly... Oh my, this has been a ride. I'm very glad it's over though. I heavily enjoyed the Citadel and I'm very glad I did it. I would actually not, even though I enjoyed the Citadel, 
personally, I wouldn't recommend it because for a high rem, it's you pretty much can't take much with you because you have to be fast. And if you do a single fall, your run's over. And for most, that's going to be annoying. But personally, I really enjoyed it, though. But I don't think most of you will like it. I know people do like it, but there's also people who really hate it. Which I completely understand, and I completely am in an agreement that this somewhat sucks. But I at least had a good amount of fun with it. So... Oh, thank you all for watching. I haven't gotten much to say. I'm very fortunate. I literally first tried 15. Oh, very happy it's over. Thank you all for watching. It's been a pleasure. See you all later.